Our last topic in this unit is solubility equilibria and the solubility product constant. And what this really deals with is uh, solubility. And from first semester general chemistry, what you might remember is that um, we had a, we had solubility rules and things were either soluble or insoluble, and there was no in between. And what solubility, uh, the solubility product constant, which will be Ksp, K sub SP, so it's an equilibrium constant. Uh, what it allows us to do is to deal with what are called sparingly soluble, excuse me, substances. Sparingly soluble substance. And um, so to cover part point A, dissolving solids in water and other solutions is what this is about. At equilibrium, the rate of dissolving equals the rate of precipitation. And the solution is saturated if there is extra solid at the bottom of the beaker. And so our picture of this, uh, when we talk about the dissolving of silver chloride, so dissolving reactions, again, something that we typically cover in first semester, coming back to have us deal with them again. Dissolving takes a solid. And if it's an ionic species like this, it's going to be break up into ions. This is my favorite sparingly soluble substance. In first semester general chemistry, it was considered completely insoluble, which is not exactly true. And uh, our KSP value for this is gonna be uh, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. And uh, we can uh, go ahead and uh, think about dissolving. Oh, so let's write a KSP expression. KSP is going to be following all of the same rules as KC always has. The solid will not appear. So we only have uh, the A product. Product means multiply. A product of two terms that are the products. So <laughs> two uses of the word product there. Uh, and what we can see KSP is going to be, and all the KSP values are gonna be small numbers because they're not very soluble. So pretty much many of the things that were considered insoluble in first semester general chem are now considered sparingly soluble. And we're gonna go ahead and calculate them. Um, we can do, a similar thing for the dissolving of uh, iron three uh, hydroxide in pure water. We would write this as, so take whatever it is. Break it up into its ions. This is going to be F iron three plus three hydroxides. It has a KSP of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 39. And I'll write that up here. Yes, that's minus 39. So this is pretty insoluble. If we were to write the KSP expression for this, still the solid um, uh, doesn't show up, but the iron three does. And the hydroxide does, and it's cubed. So all the same rules as before. Some people like to think about this as over one because there's nothing uh, that's aqueous or a gas on the reactant side. Either way works for me. Now, what this allows us to do is it allows us to calculate the solub solubility limit. And for example, this is a question you might see on the homework. What is the solubility of uh, lead to chloride in pure water? Uh, KSP 1.17 times 10 to the minus fifth. This is an ice table problem. This is a new version of it. This is the KSP version of it. And the solubility is going to be um, X. Uh, so it will also be equal, we'll see, to the concentration of lead two ions. And some places you'll see it called S in the ice table, but I'm just going to use X because we're used to that. Our ice table looks like this. It'll be a molarity ice table. 
because molarity ice tables are when you have reactions that could don't go to completion. We've got our lead two chloride. We've got lead two ion as the product. We've got two chloride ions as the other product. And we've got our KSP value right there. We put an X there because it's a solid. There will be nothing there. There will nothing in our ice table problem, nothing in our KSP expression. We have zero and zero to start. Then we put a plus X and a plus two X because we have a coefficient two there. And our KSP expression for this is going to be lead two plus concentration times CL minus concentration squared, which will be X. 2x squared equals 1.17 times 10 to the minus fifth. So this is going to be 4x cubed. And then we can divide by 4. Oop, x cubed equals 1.17 x minus 5 minus divided by 4. I get 2.93 times 10 to the minus six, and then cube root it. And 2.93 x minus six minus cube root, and I get 0 0.014. Molarity as my x value, and since x is my concentration of lead ion, and it is also my solubility. Now, if the question was, what is the concentration of chloride ions? That's 2x, and this is a common question. So 0 0.028 molarity Cl minus. And incidentally, on first semester general chemistry, lead to chloride is typically considered insoluble. You can see it's one of the cases with its relatively large for a KSP value, small for a KC value in general. Um, but it's, it's some of it definitely dissolves. So that's true. And we'll see this again.